Hey viewers, welcome to the I am Kiev LOL group stage of SKG Gaming. Uh, SK Gaming versus White Lotus, and this is the casual pro gamer, as you might very well know, because this is on my YouTube channel. Anyway, we are going to see. Um, well, the two teams starting off right away. SK Gaming is the purple team. Uh, White Lotus is the blue team, and we will see them. Uh, well, probably guarding their blue, doing something like that. There's a lot of pings going off on the map by now. Um, anyway, this is from uh, another video. Obviously, I have no control over this because, well, they will not release any replays from this uh, these tournaments, which is kind of sad. I hope they will at some point do that because now we're kind of depending on uh, well the videos from these events and I would like to well basically get my own camera going um, because well they tend to miss a lot of kills and miss a lot of plays except for the team fights it is really hard to keep track of these things and since most of the people who cast these games, well, especially from the uh, Riot Games uh, employees, they don't actually play the game and they don't actually comment that many games. They only comment on uh, on the games that are played in tournaments, which is not really well the um, the most experienced, I would say. Anyway, we don't see a jungle invade from either team, and Maokai is going to start off with raids taking them out, out instantly and the, on the enemy team it, uh, we see um, uh, Grace and Tarek getting these double golems and um, the Skarner getting wolves and blue Maokai now on his way to the blue well already working on blue and Soraka is going to go bottom now with Sivir Civil will have an easy time uh, blocking the stuns from uh, uh, Tarek with the spell shield because the spell shield, yeah, it takes no time at all to put on and the stuns travel for about half a second, maybe even more depending on how far you are away, away from the uh, the point of cast and uh, basically. Yeah, if you can uh, can see them coming, you should be able to uh, to block them, and that is a lot of free mana. And obviously, no. Um, well, if you can block them efficiently, there will be no stuns coming out. And Tarek is mostly about stuns. I mean, that's why you pick Tarek because he has uh, a re really reusable uh, stun, and also because he has an armor aura, but. Yeah, you can block the armor debuff, well, the uh, shatter, basically when you blow up the shield on Tarek. Uh, you can block that with uh, with spell shield as well. So we see some uh, wow, some big damage going on, uh, going off on the White Lotus team. Tarek and uh, Graves getting a little too aggressive there. And taking the damage, apparently both of them taking a boomerang to the face, and then uh, the Tarek taking some additional uh, hits. Yeah, we see Maokai here, camping the top lane, and are they actually going to get this kill? No, not actually getting the kill, but yeah, well, that was a lot of damage, and if uh, I really have... I think that's Irelia. Yeah, pushes in a little bit. Um, she should be able to uh, get the kill anyway. Or, well, the uh, the the Yorick will lose a lot of minions. But yeah, he's healing up quite nicely. Apparently, had some healing potions with him. Yeah, the top laners normally have a lot of healing potions because of the fact that they are far away from everywhere. So if they get ganked, uh, they can either uh, they either have to go back to uh, to base or they will yeah they will have to um, well stay in at very low health if they do not 
take the health potion. So normally we see them taking uh, some build with a lot of uh, health regen, such as um, well either boots with health potions or uh, what we also see is cloth armor with five health potions, um, the regrowth pendant with some health potions, things like that. So basically they will stay alive a lot longer than the other lanes. So with the bottom laners harassed out of the lane, uh, Sivir can just push the lane and push all of the minions into the turret, making Graves lose a whole lot of minions. And meanwhile on the top lane nothing is happening, <laughs> so I don't know why we're focusing here. Uh, so far bottom lane has definitely been the most interesting to watch. Um, yeah, junglers are 31 to 28, because well, Skarner hasn't ganked yet, at least I haven't seen him in a lane anywhere yet. Um, Graves 31 to Sivir 31, so that's equal. And then um, the top laners, Yorick 28 versus Irelia 45. So Irelia definitely winning the lane. The rest of the lanes, including the jungle, are exactly, uh, well, balanced. So, yeah, 0-0 zero, zero in kills. And, um, yeah, the purple team now ahead by about 600 gold. And that is mainly because of the uh, extra... Oh wow, lots of damage going off. And almost gets the kill there on the Graves. But not m uh, doesn't manage to uh, hit that boomerang blade. Unfortunately for Sivir, would have been a great opener. But yeah, they're now 800 gold ahead. And uh, that is a big deal, obviously. So unfortunately I have no way to distinguish between the wards. It seems that uh, the blue team has a ward in the tri-bush and, and one at the tri-bush at the top. So both bottom and top tri-bush basically. And purple team has one in the bush in the, yeah, near the river. And one at, uh, well near the dragon in the little... I don't know. The little bit of grass that is in the river. Near Dragon. But yeah, not a lot of wards going down. Normally we see a lot more. And oh, there's also a ward in the uh, purple jungle next to the mid tower. It's not really in the best spot ever, but it's. Yeah, it is still there. It provides a little bit of vision for uh brand for when the uh, the jungler comes in so the enemy jungler of course and it seems that um that is the only purpose of the ward anyhow um yeah middle lane just a farm fest um between brand and Cassadin. It's kind of a 50-50 shot who's going to win the farm war. Um, Brand, I would say, has the best skill to farm with, namely the uh, uh, Pillar of Flame into the uh, AoE attack. I don't know what it's called, Conflagrate or something like that. So Pillar of Flame into Conflagrate, something like that. Sivir pushing in here with uh, with the ultimate. And Sivir only needs one minion wave normally to push a turret, or to kill a turret. But in this case, because she's still low level, she um, she cannot really kill the whole turret, but it's still a great use of the ultimate. And does she still have a spell shield? I wonder if she saved the spell shield for... Yeah, she still has the spell shield. So... I'm pretty sure she used to, or she uh, she had the spell shield to get the stun only, and not any of the other skills because she could have blocked all of those skills. But nicely done, because the stun is the only important thing. Taking a little bit of damage is not a big deal as long as you don't get stunned, and especially if you get stunned at max range, that is a big big amount of. Uh, 
of stun. I mean, that will take a long time to uh, to clear. And I'm not sure what she brought. Oh, she brought uh, flash and heal. Where Soraka has flash and um, come on, <sighs> flash and clairvoyance. That was it. So the green team, no blue team, going for um, the dragon, and it is spotted by the purple team. And I wonder if someone, yeah, they they will come. Three of them are coming here. It's a 3 versus 4 fight, and the purple team might just take this. Oh, first blood for Sivir. And then, yeah, it's a 1 for 2 trade, so the purple team was there with 4 guys. And actually they trade 3 for 2. So that's good for them. Um, yeah. Oh wow, <laughs> that was nicely done. Uh, so the eventual score is 4 for 2. Uh, for the, uh, the purple team. Purple team being SK. And since they were already ahead. I would say that's kind of logical. But yeah, they um, they came in with 4 versus 3. Making it virtually impossible for the enemy to get out of that. And yeah, the enemy team, of course, should have cleared the wards or should have gotten a kill before going into the dragon. Um, I'm not sure if there was a teleport on um, on the top laner. Uh, basically because I cannot see the, s the uh, spells from, well, the way they did this. Because this is kind of crappily done. And we have some lagging in the video. Well, not so much in the video, but in the loading process. Now it seems that is a ghost on um, on Yorick. So both of the top uh, solo top players without a uh, teleport. And teleport can be really useful for these kind of situations where you go for dragon and you're in a 3 versus 4 fight. You can make it a 4 versus 4 fight or you can make it a 5 versus 3 fight. Which makes it even easier to get the kills. And in this case, instead of uh, getting 4 for 2, they might have gotten 4 for 1, for example. Or they might have gotten... no, not 5 for 1, because... Uh, What's her name? Oh no, never mind. I really, I wasn't there. But that wasn't my point. But I don't think Yorick was there either. Yorick came in really, really, really late because he had to come all the way from top. And once again, we have a nice little wait in the video. Come on, video. Keep loading it up. Anyhow, we're going to see a uh, steal from the blue buff with four people. And in retaliation, they are going to lose their golems, but that's not too big of a deal. Double buff on uh, on Kassadin. So I guess that is a good deal. Um, they really... Yeah, I think they stole it, right? Oh man, this is getting annoying. I have to switch to lower resolution because apparently this site has no idea how to actually load a video. Oh, what the hell happened? No, no, no. And now I don't know where we were. We were at 4 versus 2. Yeah, they just stole the uh, the blue buff. Gave it to Cassidin. And I don't know where their own blue buff is, but apparently it was also on Cassidin, and he just renewed his one or something like that. Anyway, um, Sivir and Graves just 
keep on farming and yeah you already saw who was going to win or who was probably going to win because I don't know who is actually going to win obviously otherwise I wouldn't cast this game <coughs> but yeah from the fact that uh, SK Gaming is now ahead by uh, like 2000 gold already and are almost done with killing these this last turret or this uh, bottom turret I am going to uh, assume it was them and that well anyway uh, Graves going to fall here and Siver actually has to get out of here now oh wow nicely done they get the kill on uh, whomever that was uh, whoever that was, um, Tarek and they trade 2 for 0 and they're going to get this turret now because obviously that is the way it should be going so Dragon is up once again or still, I don't know who, no no no, the other team got it the first time at least I think so but yeah, now with the two bottom laners gone, this is an, er, an easy dragon. There is no way the enemy can do anything about that. And yeah, 6 versus 2. So I really dislike the fact that we have all these things right smack in, in the center of everything. But hey, cannot change anything about it. I can't even see the champions at this moment. <laughs> uh... Yeah, well. Anyhow. Kassadin in mid lane doing a good job. And he is 4-0 uh, and o against the brand who is 2-1. But Kassadin has 106 minions where uh, brand has 98. So a little bit of a difference there. It's not a big difference. It's only uh, like 8 minions. But... Yeah, still, it's yeah, it's the kills that will make the difference. And if the uh, the farm had gone the other way, if Brand had gotten more farm, it would have been less of a difference, obviously. So apparently, Kessadin is going home, and um, Soraka is here to hold the lane, but Soraka is not really meant to hold any lane. And yeah, anyway, item-wise, uh, we see Graves with uh, three of the Doran's Blades, uh, Sivir with two, and then a Bloodthirster. So, so she already has her first big item, where Graves just has a pickaxe. And that is going to make a big, big difference, especially if, she, if Sivir can actually charge it up, because a charge of Bloodthirster will do a lot more than just the extra Doran's Blade. Um, then we see um, yeah, Kassadin who has Rod of Ages versus Brand who basically is still building on his first item. It is going to be, it seems, the uh, Rylas Crystal Scepter. Although I'm not entirely sure about that, obviously. Because it seems that it's not really the item you want to start off with normally. So Sivir taking some uh, some mana from that Pillar of Flame, because, well, what else is she supposed to do? And I'm completely missing that Boomerang Blade. Um, yeah, what else? We see the, uh, uh, the Taric with one gold item and one health crystal versus... The Soraka, who has, well, the the two gold items plus already the cooldown reduction thingy. I forgot what it's called. Um, some kind of gem. I don't know. Don't care. Kindle gem, I think it's called. Um, yeah, and both of them obviously have boots, but everyone has boots by this point. So that's a big difference. Then uh, the junglers, uh, both of them have uh, Shirelias. And 
<clears throat> the only difference between the two is the uh, additional gold item on uh, uh, Maokai. So also Maokai also richer than uh, the other guy. So team fight going off here in the middle. Yeah, you can pretty much see what's going on. Um, yeah, everyone on the <laughs> White Lotus team dying. I think they're called White Lotus. I forgot their name. Um, anyway, uh, everyone just dying. They get completely aced and they're going to lose two turrets because of this. They're not going to go for Baron here because Baron is too much of a risk with these death timers. The enemy team will be up really soon and they're pretty low already so the chances of giving away Baron would be too great and taking two towers would be a much bigger price than um, failing to get Baron. Basically if the death timers become longer they will be able to uh, to get it but for now this was the better target and they successfully took down two turrets, they all went out, went home safely. And the only thing they have to take care of now <coughs> is that the enemy team doesn't take Baron. But that's why they warded up the, uh, the river. There you see, the ward is there. And the enemy team, yeah, they either need to pink, put down a pink ward, uh, which would be fine. I mean, that would be a fine choice for them, uh, but... Yeah, it's not really. Uh, yeah, the worry of the enemy team, because <coughs> even if they take out the pink ward, at least they saw who was there, and yeah, they they can see whether the enemy team is going for uh, for Baron. So anyway, doesn't really matter, because nothing happened, and Sivir is going to take out yet another turret. <coughs> Sivir doing a good job of taking down turrets there, and yeah, Tarek once again dying. So yeah, this game is well beyond over now at 2 to 12, 22 to 32 uh, thousand gold. So they're 10,000 gold ahead, and yeah, they basically have everything under control here. So this uh, team needs to have a little more practice before they get to the next tournament yeah not able to reach anyone and then finally reaching Sivir and killing her but that cost them three guys to do that so they lose the dragon because of that so yeah that's one kill for uh, a dragon that's not really worth it but at least they got 50% more kills now so that's good um, hang on, because I was kind of comparing builds, uh, the builds from the two top laners then. Um, yeah, I find it really hard to compare those, because, well, Trinity Force I know is a really expensive item, something like 4,000 gold. Um, but yeah, that's the only item I really has, only big item. Uh, and... Yorick has his uh, mana immune plus his um, what's it called blah blah armor I forgot don't care um, the one that gets you additional uh, healing so all in all yeah I think those are pretty much the same but yeah in the minions you can see 148 versus 197 so she's ahead by 50 minions and 50 minions is a lot of gold and she really is going off the snare and there we go Brand is probably going to die no not actually Derek falls because Derek well he cannot really escape anything. Brand is going down. But it's a 2 for 2 trade so far and now it's a 4 for 2 trade. And a 4 for 3 trade. So it's not too bad for the blue team. <coughs> they actually well they lost one more. <coughs> but it could have been way worse. 
And they might still have a chance to save this turret because Graves is still alive. And Graves is not going in there because, well, it's Irelia. Come on. Irelia is really, really dangerous. And, yeah, Graves not managing to save the turret. They do say save the inhibitor, but, yeah, well, they were never going for the inhibitor anyway. So, yeah, what's going to happen next? Everybody just going back to the lane, or... I don't know. Seems that the uh, purple team can just push in and be done with it. Anyhow... I really wish they would remove some of these overlays. It's so annoying. Don't know if you can remove them. Pretty sure you can, but by now we know who's on which team, and yeah, whatever. We don't have to see the item builds through all of the game. If we see them once every like five minutes, that would be good enough. And we don't have to see the uh, mega scoreboard in the top, which has zero zero. 6 to 17, because we know it... yeah, well, whatever. <coughs> anyway, that's why I would like to have the replays on this, instead of being de uh, depending on uh, on this. So they're going to take out this uh, second inhibitor now. Oh no, ne never mind, this first inhibitor now making all of their lanes push even harder because all of the minions are going to get a little bit more HP I think I think that's how it works still have to look it up um, yeah free kill on uh, on the Skarner I don't know what he was doing there what he was trying to accomplish but yeah well 6 to 18 and yeah, by now it's 14 uh, K gold. That is a lot of gold. <laughs> My god. So Tarek now running around with an oracles and will have quite a bit of trouble getting all of these things, uh, all of these wards. And wow. A lot of damage going off right away in this fight, but nobody actually gets killed. Yeah, there we go. Finally getting some kills. Obviously, they are going to, uh, they are dying, but yeah, it just didn't happen as quickly as I thought it would. Uh, I really had died there, but yeah, that's okay. I mean, that's just one. But they got three of them, including the guy with the oracles, and that alone is worth. Like two kills and getting another kill there on. Uh, oh my god, this is complete craziness, man. There's nothing this blue team can do anymore. So they might as well just surrender and be done with it. But I guess they want to play it out because this is a tournament and. Uh, yeah, they apparently just want to finish it. Well, finish the match in style. Yeah, well, the uh, Sivir are now going for the red buff. Because, yeah, what else are you going to do? <sighs> By now, not a whole lot to uh, to see here anymore. Because it doesn't matter anymore. There is no way they can come back. Against, uh, or in solo queue, this might not be over. I mean, there might be a way in which they could actually come back but you would need a very fat Nessus or something like that but really the only one who's fat on this team is Graves and yeah I, I don't see him carrying this team because well he just doesn't do enough damage he has an affinity edge and that's it <laughs> Well, the Sivir on the other team has 
uh, Blood Surster and the Trinity Force, which is yeah, strange to me, but I guess she knows what she's doing. It will help with the W. The um, yeah, the the whatever ricochet if you can get it to hit an enemy to an enemy champion it will do a lot of damage but yeah that's just a sheen of course you get some additional movement speed and uh, attack damage and you get a slow that procs every now and then but all in all yeah I don't think it's a really the item you should get on Sivir and once again the whole team getting wiped out this time for zero kills and yeah this is uh, just completely done they get another inhibitor and they're going to get the two turrets and the nexus and that is it so end of the line so this is just one of the uh, the rounds obviously I'm going to try to find the others as well and put them up. This was the really exciting one but I'm sure you enjoyed at least I enjoyed and these are the guys that actually cast it in real life. Um, anyway I hope you enjoyed I'll see you next time. GG.